So this will be the first official devlog, first full devlog that we started to lay out the project for in the last video. That's the Lost Facility project here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've been working on across the last week or what I've been working across the last week. And the first thing that we needed to do was kind of block out the scene and just kind of figure out what we want to do with kind of the shot. And everything that you see in this video is going to be available on Patreon. Like I said, this is going to be kind of a running uh, project file. I'm going to continue to update it and continue to provide my updates every week, as well as the assets that we generate along the way. So there'll be some assets in there as well, uh, especially uh, in this project file as well. So there'll be some some terrains that uh, that you can have access to. But uh, just what I've been doing here is just the, the block out of the initial scene. And at this point in time, I'm still not sure whether I want this to be like a full like short type thing or uh, just a animation or a couple of shots. I'm not really sure. So I'm going to build out kind of more of the scene than I probably need to. But we'll uh, kind of figure that out as we go here. And what I've built here is just a, a general block out of kind of what I'm thinking and uh, kind of leaning more towards an animation. So thinking like a kind of like a canyon type thing or like some mesas going on here. That's what these uh, blocks represent. Some just raised geometry with our facility being where this little sphere is at. So I'm thinking that there's going to be a, you know, a shot through this canyon, whether it be, you know, uh, following something or whatever, but uh, I'm thinking we'll we'll move through this canyon and then we'll kind of veer off and see the facility over here. That'll be kind of our shot. So that's uh, just a little block out that I did. So I needed to start to kind of build this out. So I hopped back into Gaia for the initial block out here. And this is what I came up with. And we may end up changing this as we go, but this is kind of the terrain and I'm using Gaia and not Houdini for the terrain because I like the erosion models that you get from Gaia better than what you get from the, the default Houdini erosion. So what I've done here is actually this is just a slight modification of the default to canyon terrain that they that they ship with because uh, I, I was mostly all the way there of what I was actually looking for. I just needed to do a couple things to it. So I started out with the canyon here and then it, these are the settings and it's probably just going to be easier to go through if you have the project file, but running it through some erosion here, some thermal erosion and then some more erosion just to break up some of these shapes. And then we pump that into terraces to kind of create some of those terraces and use this multi-fractal to kind of drive that along with a height selection of just the tops because we don't want terraces necessarily at the bottom. We'll leave that to the erosion. And then we run that through a second erosion to just kind of break up the you know, terraces a little bit and just give them a little bit of erosion just to kind of sink them into the geometry and make them look more, uh, more realistic. And then I run that into a rugged just to break up these shapes a little bit. And I'm selecting that based off of the, the height here. So this height, so only the top of that is being affected. And then this is where I think it starts to veer off from the just the default here. So I take a I wanted to just flatten out this bottom part. So I take a constant. And you can see that it is up here. And I run that through a combine with a subtract, and that just gets rid of this bottom, this bottom part. So we go from from this to this, and I'm using the height, this height node to select that. So only selecting the bottom here, and then I run that back through a combine with this height here, just to bring this this constant back, just to bring us from this lowered terrain all the way back up to this general. Um, type of height that we have here. So I don't want it to be you know, super far down. That looks really stupid. So I just level that back out with this. And we maintain a little bit of that 
detail in this, uh, but I'm not really too worried about that because I know that I'm going to replace that in Houdini later, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. But let's go ahead and jump over to this other project, and this is basically just one of the um, the default setups as well that come with with Gaia, and it's just a, a rock detail that I've set up. I'm thinking I'm not really sure what I've what I'm going to do with this, but I'm I'm thinking that we're going to take the if I jump back over here. If I take these parts of the terrain here that are, guys, movement's a little weird, but these, these terrain parts right here that are like vertical are gonna be kind of stretch geometry. So I, in my mind, I'm thinking that I'm gonna have to change that geometry up somehow. We're gonna have to do some sort of, of modification to it. So I'll probably have to remesh it or something to that effect, do some sort of displacement. And this is the texture that I'm kind of thinking to, to use. So it's just a plates node where it ran through a rugged to just kind of crack and break it and then run through a shatter as well with some different settings. And actually, let me run back through the shatter properties there. I'll just give you all these properties real quick. And then the seamless node just to make it seamless and tileable. And yeah, okay, I did give you the the properties for these. So this is the the final texture that I'm thinking. And like I said, this I'll provide the the terrain and the the little rock detail texture here in the description or in the in the Patreon. So um, I've just exported these. I haven't added any color to them yet because I'm still deciding on. Um, what I'm gonna need for mask and stuff. Uh, we'll see that kind of later in the texturing process But let's jump into Houdini here and we'll jump over to where I've actually set this up and I've not really decided fully what I need to do with this Setup yet. I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to keep the bottom of the canyon that we created in the last video as a separate mesh or if we're going to use it all as one. So I've just separated out the bottom in this, uh, this stop create. So I brought in our height field here with a mask by feature, just masking out the bottom here. And then a mask or a height field visualize with this kind of setup. So layer one mask with these colors all set up. And the reason we're doing that is because we can, in this convert height field node, we can check this bake point colors and that will allow us to bake out that mask to a point color that I can then just pump into a blast node. So that's just creating a color channel. So CD is greater than eight or 0.8 and that's gonna just delete out that bottom part. And then we run that through delete small parts just to get rid of any, any tiny pieces. And I have the threshold set up pretty high because these large pieces are all I wanna keep and they are way bigger than that area of 100. And then I just get rid of the color. And then I use some connectivity nodes to blast away the different parts and separate them a little bit. So I'm not sure whether I wanted to break up this canyon, push them a little bit farther apart. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna need that or not. And then I just brought over our canyon floor here. All I did was a height field with a convert height field and then I merge those together. So this is option number one, but as you can see here, you can see that there is this, this break in between the terrains, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work at render time. So I'm thinking I'm gonna end up not using this method and I've maybe got these kings pushed a little bit far apart. So instead I set up a second SOP create that gives us a little bit different geometry. So we still have that canyon floor texture here, but they're a little bit better blended together. And we also have our canyon. So what I did with this is brought in our canyon height field, as well as the floor there. I did a mask by feature just to select that bottom part. And then I'm just doing a blur on that to make it a little bit smoother. And then I'm using a height field layer node to pump in the, the bottom of our height field or our, our canyon kind of texture. It's not really a, a canyon texture, but more of a, a desert terrain texture. 
or landscape, I guess. And let me just show the mask clear because it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So in the height field layer, I've just offset that with a value of 51.1 because you can see that this is really low compared to this height field. The reason for that is because I have the scale set differently, or that's part of the reason at least. The height field scale on this one, I didn't need it to be pushed up so far, so I just used a scale of 300 instead of 500 that I used for the canyon. And I'm using our mask to define where that's at. So it's just bringing it in at the bottom of our canyon here, and that allows us to get this nice shape that we have here. And you can turn off this UV texture and get this. So we still have that nice detail that we created in both terrains, both the bottom and the actual canyon terrain. In this one, we also get that same sort of a setup here, just a little bit different. And I may end up separating these out a little bit further, these canyon, the sides of the canyon. I may push them out a little bit, but I haven't decided. We'll probably come back to that at a later date just because we'll need to see kind of how things line up in the framing of the actual shot. So in the next week, I'm hoping to kind of start to lay out some of the, the, um, the rest of the train. So if we look, take a look back at our block out here, so kind of blend the shapes here. So the edges kind of break them down. So they're not these, you know, obviously these harsh, harsh edges have them kind of merge slowly into the ground and then kind of create the back faces of these probably be some more Canyon work in Gaia. And then also I may look to, to start on the actual modeling of our, of our facility here, but we'll see, see how much time I have. Uh, and we'll see what we can get get accomplished. I also started to mess around with render settings, but I was testing out displacement and stuff. Um, I may switch out of out of Solaris here. I'm not sure. Uh, probably stick with it though, but uh, I was having some, some issues and I don't know if I want to spend a bunch of the time for what I spend on working on trying to, to figure out some things in Solaris that I haven't figured out yet. But we'll see. I'll share what I can as we go. Um, also, I was running into an issue with Karma. I'm not sure which render engine I'm going to use for this as well. That was asked of me. I have a option of three different ones I, that I have licenses for. Obviously, I have a license for Karma. I have a license for Redshift. And then I have a license for V-Ray as well. So I'm not sure which one I'll choose. I may end up setting it up for multiple ones. I may end up setting up all three depending on how things go but uh, we'll see how that pans out as we get further on in this project but I was having issues with karma if you guys know I didn't have time to look into the error but um, I tried to set up karma to render and it said I had no license which makes no sense because it comes with Houdini so if you guys know how to fix that error Go ahead and let me know in the description. Otherwise, I'll have to look into, or in the in the comments. Otherwise, I'll have to look into that more. But anyways, that's the project over the last week. Some of the things that I've done. Like I said, all of these terrains and everything will be available on Patreon. It goes available as well as the project file of Houdini here. So if you want to grab all that, you can do that on Patreon. And we'll continue to build this out over the, the next coming weeks. So... Let me know if you have any ideas or any, I don't know, anything in the comments, just feedback in general. I would love to, to hear what your guys' thoughts are so far. But anyways, hopefully you learned a little bit or something, or maybe you just found this entertaining. So hopefully you'll continue to follow along and follow with me as we hopefully create something pretty cool here. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.